When looking at simple harmonic motion, sometimes uh, the equations are what really get students a little bit nervous, uh, especially when you look at the equations for SHM. Okay, so for simple harmonic motion, the equations look a little bit wacky. So I'm going to show you them and hopefully show you how easy they are actually to work with. So the very first equation that, uh, well, there's a whole bunch of them. I'm not going to show you all of them, but I will show you a few. So uh, one of the main ones to show you then is this one. It goes x equals x zero. And then what we do is we multiply uh, that value by sine omega t. So it's going to help maybe to define what these are. And before I do that, maybe it helps to remind you again what we're looking at for simple harmonic motion. Let's say I've got my really boring example of uh, some object that's sitting on the ground here, assuming it's frictionless, and it's got a spring at one end, and it's got a spring at another end, so it's oscillating back and forth. And this is a value x equals zero. Now it might go to a maximum value here, and it might go to a minimum value here. So maybe it sort of oscillates between these points. Okay, back and forth, back and forth. Well, then it might also be interesting to look at the uh, energy of this, just to remind you about how that graph looked. So also, if I wanted to try to look at the energy, um, what I could do then is actually graph, well, if this is the position, this is the position where I am, so if I've got x here, and this could be the energy, which is in joules, well then, uh, whoops, I should probably put my axis somewhere right in the middle, let's say. So this is the energy as you go up and down here. But well, what will happen is the kinetic energy will do something like this. We'll do something like that. Okay, so that will be EK. So what that means then is that at x equals zero, there's a maximum kinetic energy. That should make sense from what we looked at before, because at x equals zero, that's when it's right here, that's when it's going to be moving the fastest. Remember, over here it's stopped. Then it turns around and goes, and it's traveling as fast as it can right here. Then it goes, slows down again, and stops here. Goes back again, fastest here. So the maximum kinetic energy, the EK highest value it reaches, is at x equals zero. So right here at x equals zero. Now we also have the potential energy, and it actually works in the opposite way. So potential energy will be something like this. So this will be E. P. That means that at x equals zero, it has no potential energy. That's because the springs aren't really pulling on it much. Whereas when it's over here at its maximum displacement, that's when it has a maximum potential energy. And that's because it's got all the stored up energy because it's just stopped and it wants to really go flying that way or opposite like this. So looking at this, how can we relate all this stuff to these things? Well, this is the first equation here, and maybe we should define some things. So the very first one is x. x is your displacement. That's your, maybe I'll say actual displacement. Maybe that's better. Actual displacement. That'll be measured in meters. Well, x0 is going to be your maximum displacement. also measured in meters. So x is your actual position. You're sitting here, you're at x equals zero. Over here, you're at uh, x equals whatever. Over here, you're at maximum displacement. So that's when you're at x zero. Now, um, we have t, which is the time. That's in seconds. And we have omega, which is the angular frequency. which is actually measured in radians per second. Some people like to measure it in hertz. But uh, this is the angular frequency. So what this means then is that you can figure out what your actual displacement is depending on what time you're looking at, so to speak. All right? So this right here will basically tell you how many radians you've gone around if you think carefully about the units. Uh, because you've got omega, which is in radians per second. If you multiply that by time, which is in seconds, the seconds cancel out on the top and the bottom. So you just have a sine of some angle in radians. And that's going to be just multiplied by your maximum displacement. You're rarely asked to actually calculate this, but it's still a good idea to know how these work. 
Now we have another equation as well. So this right here, this is one for the uh, kinetic energy at any point. And it's going to be 1 half m omega. Uh, now this one here, the omega is going to be squared here. And we're going to multiply that by x0 squared minus x squared. So that's what we're going to be doing here. So this equation right here, this tells me about the kinetic energy of this thing going in a simple harmonic motion. This is its kinetic energy at any position. Remember, again, this m is just your mass. That's your mass in kilograms. And ek is your energy in joules. So what's happening here is we have a difference of squares of your maximum displacement compared to your actual displacement. Okay. Then we have an equation here for ek max. This tells you the maximum kinetic energy. And I want to show you how we can figure out what happens here. So this one right here, the equation goes like this. 1 half m omega squared times x0 squared. That's it. Now why would that be? Look at this. This ek max looks just like the ek one, except there's no minus x squared. So let's think about what happens here. We want to know the maximum kinetic energy. Now think about it over here though. Over here, this little white curve here, that's the, ma that's the kinetic energy, depending on your position. So over here, at maximum displacement, we have zero kinetic energy. Whereas at zero actual displacement, we have a maximum kinetic energy. So at maximum kinetic energy, we have x equals zero. So at max kinetic energy, x equals zero. That should make sense. Right? If you look at this graph here, the kinetic energy curve is the highest when x is zero. So all you have to do then is set x here equal to zero. Well, setting that equal to zero means that disappears. So that should explain why ek max is just this, half m omega squared x zero squared. That's it. Now the last and final equation tells you about the total energy. So the total energy, they tell you it's just this, 1 half m omega squared x0 squared. You might think, what the, is the total energy really equal to the maximum kinetic energy? Because these are the same. Let's see if that makes any sense. Now the total energy, total energy ET, is just equal to the potential plus the kinetic. Okay, so that we've learned before, that the total energy is the kinetic plus the potential. So that means if we look at this graph over here, that means the total energy at any given x point is just add up the potential plus the kinetic energy. So if I did it, uh, let's say right over here at this x value right here, well I would add, or maybe this value right here, let's say. If I did it right here. If I'm looking at that x value right there, what's the total energy? Well, it would be whatever that potential energy is, whatever that value is, plus whatever this value is, because that's the kinetic. So it would be that potential plus that kinetic. Okay, so we can do that for any point. But why not make our lives easier? Again, look at maximum kinetic energy. Look at when we choose x equals zero here. What happens then? Well, then the potential energy is zero. So I'm going to say, but at x equals zero, EP, whoops, the potential energy equals zero, and the kinetic energy is EK max. So hopefully that makes sense. If we just arbitrarily pick x equals zero here, if we make x zero, well, the potential energy is zero at that point, only there. And the kinetic energy is at its maximum, so that's ek max. So because of that then, I end up with et, which is supposed to be ep plus ek, but the ep cancels out. So I have et equals ek, and at that point it was max. So that's hopefully explaining why the total energy is actually the same as the maximum kinetic energy, only because we happen to choose that x equals zero there. We could actually find the total energy uh, anywhere else if we wanted, and there we just have to add up the kinetic plus the potential energy. 
you could be asked then at a certain point, maybe they give you an equation. Maybe they say the total energy equals this crazy equation. Then they say, and the kinetic energy is this. What's the potential? You can easily figure that out because all you have to do is just look at, well, the potential is going to be the total minus the kinetic. So it all depends on where you picked. So you, you, can't, you can't just say the total energy, oh, the potential energy is always zero. No. This was a special case. So this, this always works here, that the total is potential plus kinetic. But at this specific point, if we choose x equals zero, then the potential is zero and the kinetic energy is ek max. Therefore, we can say that at that point, e total is ek max. Now, of course, this works for any situation, any x value, that the et is equal to ek max. But what if we're not given the maximum kinetic energy? What if we're just given the kinetic energy at some general point? Maybe we're given the kinetic energy here at this x value. Well, then if you notice, then you have to be more careful and consider the potential energy and the kinetic energy. So this is how it works. And hopefully you'll see that these equations, there's no reason to sort of freak out when you see them. They may look awkward, but it's just a matter of decoding what everything means. The key thing to remember is that x is your actual displacement and x0 is your maximum displacement.